played by this, the first jiu-jitsu seminar I ever went to. And it was no gi with a, with a Brazilian or a white belt. And we did this one. Osana. That's what it's called in judo. But Cora hit that in her first uh, tournament. I, it may not have been her first, but this Memphis tournament, Anaga, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, she hit this. And we've had people hit this at white belt, blue belt, on through the belts, right? So it, it is uh, an effective throw. Most people have an idea. Okay. Now, most people make some really big mistakes on it too. And I'm just gonna, gonna show three throws today that all go to this pin. That's the only reason we're kind of breaking them down and then we'll start getting to work with it, okay? But look, as he's coming forward, I step here. Look how our feet are in line. So if I step behind here, I've got his balance, okay? So here, and get back on. And if you want to do the other side here, I don't I don't worry about switching my grips. What I will do is go to here, right? It's controlling the neck, it pushes them off balance, right? And if I am doing something like this pin, where I'm gonna get into his head, that's fine. Right? So don't worry about I need to switch grip the side of my grip. And, okay. When he comes forward, like this. See, we're side by side. I'm here. Right, step out. But right, going to the other side here. Okay, so just they're walking forward the whole time. Come in. That's cool. Oh, so that means outside leg technique. All right, let's do it. One, two. Just you know, like not all judo crosses over to jiu jitsu, but a lot of it can uh, because of the grips, because of the gi. And a lot of judo can cross over to no gi too. If you look at Greco Roman wrestling, it's essentially no gi judo. Like that is exactly how I see it. It's a, it's a lot of upper body work, but you don't have the, the collar to manipulate. So study both. Um, you ever see people get into this? That's in every Greco-Roman practice room, right? Um, so here's, uh, here's what we're gonna get into now. How, how can we use this, uh, th this throw? Like this, that first one. Okay, a lot of, a lot of ways to get into this and, and in different takedown arts, you have all these different grips to do this one thing, right? Again, don't get too hung up on the grips because there's a whole bunch of them and sometimes they can cloud things up for you, in my opinion, right? So here's what we're gonna do. Sharp, come in and get a body lock on me to the side, okay? Like, what? see my hip, I'm standing up straight right now. When he pulls my hips in, right, this side, yeah, suck them in like that, like, you know, like my, our wrestling coach, MacArthur, we did a single or a body lock to you. It feels like he's feeding you, he's a heavyweight. It feels like he's like pushing you under his legs, okay? So he's sucked like that, okay? If anybody ever body locks you that way, when he sucks you in, come into uh, group row, right? Now, let's get into some details. Each time we do a throw, we'll get into some details about it. And we'll start adding on subs. This is the pin, and you know it's called Kessa, right? A lot of uh, catch rests is called head arm ride, right? So the three main components I want you to deal with right now is the head. We gotta have it with our arm, okay? When you have this, it's, it, it's hard. I don't pinch this all the time. It's hard for him to get the elbow to the mat though if I do pinch it. One of the main escapes is to get your elbow to the mat. And he's gonna get his head out or as he does that, I start coming down, he starts, you know, coming up or getting his guard back one or the other. All of those things are not good for me. So, this, I wanna grab that tendon on the inside, right uh, there, just the bottom of my hamstring and latch onto it. So I wanna capture his head in that way. And if he's ever trying to get his elbow out, I pinch the head. I don't do it all the time, okay? Now, this is either gonna be in or out. We'll see options with both of us today. If it's out, great. You can push it over. You can lift up and make the pin even worse. All right, push it over and go to chokes. We'll see some different options. Or the arm is under your arm. Okay, this is another really good one. But here's the thing. When you're here, he can grip and he can bridge you up and roll you over. Okay, so how we deal with that is we sink our weight down. If he tries to bridge me up, 
I'm just dead weight. A lot of you probably seen like everybody says this for self defense. I'm doing that in that pin. It's the same exact concept. Wait, uh, so yeah. I'll, th I'll show the throw a couple more times. But all this stuff, if you get thrown and you get reversed immediately, it's not cool. So start trying to do stuff when you hit the mat. All right, so bridge me up and just get my weight over you. That. See, I had to post. Sometimes you do have to post, but it's not, it's not the best idea. You can recover from it, but right now, go. All right, try and get your elbow out. Go that way. Try and like run away from me. Turn into me. Okay, so they're gonna, you're gonna clock away and they're gonna turn in. They try and get their elbow down to get out, take the back, they're gonna try and bridge you up. So the main things you gotta watch out for. And when you get taken down, you can kind of talk to your partner and it feels that out, okay? So we're here, he comes in body lock. He tries to bridge me, right? Sink down. He tries to get his elbow to the mat, pull up. He was going that way, so I walked him. He comes back into me. So, a lot of um, debate on the best way to keep your legs. The highest profile jujitsu match that anybody ever tapped to this as a position, as a compression, a, a sub, the legs are this way. The way I have them right now. And that's Dean Lister, Josh Barnett. So a lot of people are doing this because they don't want to get their hook insert here because they're worried about that head coming out again. Okay? Most people, you train very long, you're familiar with that. Okay, you can take your back, put you in the truck, do that again. Okay. So when he gets this, if I yeah, sorry, if I cross, right, kind of extend my feet away, and keep him from not only getting out but also get that chest compression again. So it's a little bit about how you put your feet. And if he's trying to lift you up, have all your weight on the mat. Otherwise, have a little bit of it off the mat, riding on him. Okay. So just micro level hip turn. Versus that. Right, see that? Just kind of the action. I need to turn and hit the, the leg all at once. And I'm doing this. I'm not trying to hurt my own elbow. But I also don't want to crack his ribs too bad. He did volunteer to come up here and help me. But I'm kind of, in, I, this is a detail I got a long time ago from Sean Church. We did take downs of him. And he's like talking about falling on the forearm. They talk about that in judo as well. It's a muscle. Right? But you can kind of air on it and fall on your elbow. So I'm doing that because Shark is my friend and teaching with me today. I don't want to hurt him. Right? But if I'm in a tournament, I'm just going to land on you. It's not everybody I've ever trained with or how old judo guys like, yeah, I just land on him. I don't have to differentiate. It's time to land on him and turn it. Never had a problem not doing it. He pulls me in. See, that went down. Then get your ride. Okay. That throw is called body drop. That's the translation, Tai Toshi and Judo. It's a basic, more like the first 10 throws. All right. So, using it as a counter, though, that's a little bit more applicable than this. But this is the key to the door. All right. This was also the warm up for us. So, Tai Toshi off the body lock counter. And we'll add some stuff onto that in a minute. All right, one two. Small, small history lesson. All right, from it, an actual historian. So, there's a debate on whether or not that this throw has a name in judo. And it's like when you do this, but you have his head. Right, which is kind of what I was doing. Right, there's a guy that set up judo for Japan in France. He, this is his throw. Everybody knew him for throwing people this way. Right. Now, there's a famous hip throw where you pick them up like that. That's a hip throw. They actually call, even though I'm doing this with my leg, they call this a hand technique. They're saying it's a hole. 
It's all either pulling his gi or, or just you like pulling his head off. So they call those hand techniques. Like this is a hand technique. So some people differentiate and say like, hey, this is a whole other throw that we're doing, right? But really it's just, don't get too hung up on that. There's variations and like, it's really like, hey, I'm lifting him up or I'm not. Like the action is a little different and the rest, how they judge it, is how the legs go through the air, right? But this is a variation, like he pulls me in right here. Look at my heel. I just slid down. When I, when I teach side falls to beginners, we do this. You see how my foot was on the mat the whole time? There's a standing arm bar. Where you get that as well. Right, but you just, it, it's hard to kind of, you gotta relent. You lay that weight and they go down, right? But it's just putting weight on people. So he pulls me in here, look, slide on my heel. I land past his, his knee here, and then I start getting that ride. So, wait, you know, when he tucks you in, turn and plant your foot, right? And then start sliding down, just like that. Into that ride. Make sense? Okay. I've always, you know, this this can be risky if you're just starting out, okay? I've had uh, uh, fighters fail in fights. Like, they go ahead and they try and get, like, something like this, and that happens, right? And then th this would be, like, the highlight reel of the night if they dumped them with a the sweep. But then it's, it's risky, and this is why, I like, this pin, a lot of people lose out on some of the details, and they think they're going to get their back taken. Right? If you have these details and you know, like, oh, they're going to do these two things, really, you can kind of work around that, okay? This is a little different. I don't see this as risky coming in here, okay? You can gable or, or you can grab and pull in like that, like a sort of like a butterfly style grip, okay? You see, like, in, in nogi, people do that. This is, again, like an upper body clinch, right? But collar and elbow or collar and bicep either one, like if you're in these sort of ties, right? And I, here's the thing, sometimes you know, jiu-jitsu, I don't end up in, I, I, I grappled like one of the best white belts that I've ever grappled, kind of just passed driving through, like a, like a smooth operator. And we ended up in that clutch and we were in the gear, you know? So like, don't think like it was just, it just kind of became that for a second, right? But when we're here, go up under, grip, and lift the hip. So what I would want for everybody is like, you don't have to you know, walk away with all these throws. Like the best people in the world are usually good at like one to three throws and everything revolves around that. And usually the throw they really like, the other two throws are just linked to that and they happen as a consequence of the primary throw that they want, right? Like best people in the world. So here I'm lifting, right? Now you can do this motion, you can also, Drop to the knee. And try and cue in on like the action that you like. This is what I see is more of a hip throw when I don't sit past like this. Right there. Here. You can still do the slide out. You can still do the high toshi. Right? And this is being kind of a hybrid of that. Right? You can pick him up, or you can drop to a knee. And when you drop to a knee, turning and looking, just like when you're hip throwing. A lot of these throws, when, you, when we're loading like with the gi grips and doing those counters today, is everything for me to turn and look with it. Okay, so when I'm here, what's what happens when I turn and look? He slides off my back. He's gotta do that at some point. So here, arms out, we can turn it back. It's actually out on that. Alright? So here. You can go there. You want to lift.
I was telling them, like, I remember, I learned this throw the week, or this defense counter throw, the, the weekend before I tested for my showdown in judo, which is your, your first degree black belt, right? And it's this one, it's that one, I'm like, I'm at the first jiu-jitsu center, I've been training like less than six months, I'm like, I know this one. I didn't know it, but I thought I did, because I've seen it in movies and stuff. We did the other one, everybody knows where you flip them over. I'm like, I, I've seen these, right? Yeah, I, had, I was aware of them from like Hollywood, just different things, right? But this, okay? You know, this is a 50-50 throw. We're neutral. Sharp could, he could throw me. Boom. Right? So, what, like, what, one thing about, like, uh, this stuff that I think people learn last, it's all like, hey, learn how to fall so you can preserve, right? It's the defensive posture. And if you have defensive posture, when people try and throw you, it won't work and you can counter throw them. Okay? So, and like, just be like, kind of step out when I come in. Right? So that, like, didn't have enough space. So now I'm going to get closer. Boom. Right? Now, st just step out again. Boom. Right? I'm closer. Step out again. Boom. So how can he intercept that, right, without having to step out? Because I'm here to tell you the step out is a cool defense for beginners, but it is not what I want. I don't want to come in on me. I don't want to do this. I mean, I'm susceptible to a front headlock. If we're talking about fighting, uh, or some, any something you know, I could get need right here, uppercuts for striking, whatever. Okay, so you don't ever really in fighting. I don't like having my head over my knees like this. Okay, so here's the idea: if Sharp comes in to Osoto me, right? Take my balance like that. Okay, so take my balance. All right, come in and take my balance. Okay, so what I'm doing, you, could, you don't even see it. Because he's trying to throw me backwards and I do this, you don't see any movement, right? Essentially, it's like a sprawl. Like I said to somebody earlier, the sprawl, your legs become straight when they lose, right? If, you, you, if they're like really trying on the double, you gotta go all the way straight with your legs, like this. Okay, so my hips are forward on a sprawl. So I'm, I'm doing this lean like this when he comes into a sodomy, right, come in. So you just hit the wall, and then I also go, like this throw we did, right? We extended our leg. Well, here, the sharp's in on me, and I extend my leg. It takes him down. So I just slow, yeah, get in here. So find it, like try to take me backwards, right? I've got the posture, right? Leaning forward and into him, okay? He's trying to throw you backwards. Before he does this to you, you gotta get leaned forward. You gotta time it, so you, I'm not gonna throw you, you don't throw me, but I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna try and take out that leg. Good, and just stay relaxed. There you go. Ah, that's good. This uh, uh, metaphor applies on singles, doubles. Any throw I could get you with has this sort of defense to it. Okay, so he comes in on me, check me. Well, other side. Mm -hmm. All right, look, he's coming in to throw me. I'm not being, a, I'm just leaning my weight forward. My hips are going like this. And I lean into it. Now when he comes in, I throw. Okay? So, it's a defense, like kind of the other, is a counter, right? If your body locks me, he come in. He tries to throw me with this other thing. Boom. We throw him. We don't have to be good at every throw. We have to have good defense so we don't get taken down. That's the part everybody doesn't like. Right? So, defensive posture. I call it the forward lean. Right? It's a real valuable technique. Just just do it just like that. Drill it back and forth. I'm trying to, he comes in on me. Boom. Right? And just back and forth. Get the defense. Lean forward. All right? One, two. But if I do this, it's called Osototoshi, right? You can drop the knee on it. I, I taught that variation last time I was down here, actually, from just some different grips. Okay, so that's Osotobari. If I'm doing the over-the-head hip throw, Koshi Garuma. If I'm using my leg like we talked about, that's Taitoshi. Koshi Garuma and Taitoshi are second group. Uh, second group eight, it's in that. 
but it's still very beginner. Like if you're like first couple years of judo, you're gonna see those throws all the time. Okay, so those throws particularly and, and others too go to that pin we worked on. Okay, so let's shift gears and start working on some submissions from that pin. Right, and still be checking. Try and bridge them. Try and get your elbow down. So you gotta. You gotta control this arm. You gotta get under the head. And this is a mistake people make. They won't have that shoulder shelved, okay? So I need to lift him up and scoot that under there, right? And I'm always kind of gathering it back, right? Now, here's a cool little option. Grab with the body lock. And a lot of times you're gonna see me, like we, we did the pin details, work those, but I'm also not gonna set on him the whole day. Right? So I already threw him and fell on him several times. Right? But so, but it, again, you got to kind of, I'll go over some ways to create pressure and adjust the ride, but we did some of that. Just work it incrementally. Hey, try and do that, and then I'll attack. If he has the body lock, like I'm coming in there and I'm sawing down, I'm trying to put my elbow like in his, his elbow, really, like right there in that bend, and saw back to his grip. Okay? Now, from here, I'm gonna grip like this, right? I'm gonna turn, and I'm gonna step here. That's already a tap. But, my hips, this is a, the, uh, look, everybody kind of bags on, on Hickson like he's selling snake oil or something, because he's like, invisible jujitsu. I'm, like, I'm trained at the guy, and, and probably no one else here other than Cora has, and it's not snake oil. It is like, hey, world champion in the room. Can you do this to me? Oh, you can't? Here's the way you're supposed to be doing it the last time, the whole life you've been training. He does, he calls it invisible because like that defense, I learned that from Hickson. You can't see what he's doing. I've been training in like 10 years when I saw him do that. And I'm like, guys, guys, all the black belts and brown belts in the room, 200 people, what is he doing? I got a judo black belt test next week. This is one of the first shows, what's he doing? He's doing something that addresses what they're doing. You can't see it. A lot of times people say this on this, this technique. Oh, you put this knee down and this knee up. That's a consequence of what you're doing. It's not what you do. If I just do that, it's, there's some slack there. This hip's fine. I'm raising my hips like that. That's what shears the lock. Can you do it the other way? Yes. But, again, this is like I see this a lot. People will be like, Oh, I need to go to the side and they will fall on their side when they're supposed to be on their back. It's a misinterpretation. They'll see somebody fall down at an arc and think they're pulling them down at a 45 degree angle, right? When it's, you're pulling them forward and they fell that way, right? So come in here. Look, when I grip, I'm rolling like this, not with the thumb here. And I'm going to scoop it behind. If it turns and here in a second, we'll do this. It's like any bent straight. I'm showing you a straight arm lock, right? And here in a second, we'll do a variation when it turns over and it'll be Kimura, but punch the thumb here and catch, and I'm pulling it back and raising my hip. Yeah, it's and it's fast when you do all that. Whereas here, right, push, watch here. I'm just gonna do that thing with the knees. I still got it. Start turning your arm. I don't have it. And then the only way I'm gonna get it here is by doing that detail with the hips. And you see, you see the knees doing that? The people always say, this knee up, this knee down. That's not what you're doing, it's the hips. The hip, this hip is fine. It's on the right plane. This hip's gotta come up. Like that, to meet it. And that, helps dramatically okay so he's here get your ride in like this okay like that okay if it turns same thing here raise right it's not just this it's the hip it's just totally different it's so subtle you can't even hardly see it's just yeah you know, the unfortunate part is like and it's not bagging on you this like imagine imagine speaking Portuguese is the first language and trying to explain a super uh, complex art to someone who speaks English the first language. And like, we're just getting on the other side of that historically in the art, right? 
So that's, you know, I, and there's people out there that are really good at it. With the Henzos and the Hicksons and you know, Donna, John Donner went to philosophy school. That's why he's so good at it, right? Has logical terms to make your mind think about stuff. And, and that's what we need, this articulation. You, oh, what are you doing there with your hips while I'm bringing my hips up? When that becomes knee up, knee down, and that's not what you, what's happening. Okay? So, get with your partner straight arm lock. And if they turn it down, that's going to happen naturally while you're figuring this out. And then do the defense, do the Kimura. One, two. Here's kind of another Kimura. I, mean, I, I remember, his, I've been trying a few years before I saw this first. Um, he grabbed, gripped around the body. Like near, let's say you kind of had a hard time like finding your elbow in there. Hook his elbow like a heel hook, okay? Like your, your wrist bone here, like this, okay? Now, look, I'm gonna gable grip my hands, or uh, S grip my hands rather, okay? And I wanna take his shoulder forward like this, okay? And then I'm gonna take it up to my nose, all right? So, Right here, we're not at that big of, a, of a, a danger, right? The shoulder hasn't been isolated that much. But when I lean forward like this, right? And then I'm pulling it here. Just like that, okay? Now, sometimes people even do teach this with one hand, and that's fine too, okay? But if you can't saw out the arm, you're having a hard time with that, go under, lift it, Right, meaning he goes forward and then lift it to your face and he taps. Okay, pretty simple, but it's kind of hard to find. And that's, I used to, when I was coming up, people always say things like, oh, you'll develop the sensitivity on your choke. And I'm like, well, when's that happen? Because it, you know, it's like, uh, and they're like, oh, you know, in a few years. You know, you're a white belt or a blue belt, and but you don't think about things like 10 years in the future when you ha when you understand. And you just got to stick with it and try and find people that can articulate it in a way that you understand. I hear things from people all the time about this stuff, and somebody explains it a way I understand. And it's like, I've been hearing that one since 2008, but that's the person that explained it in a way. And sometimes I learn new things is why I can understand it, right? But so when you're here, He's got, he can't get the arm out. You like shoulder locks, you like Kimuras. Raise forward, heal it up, okay? And guys, I tell people this too. Talk with your partner. You know, if, you, if, you, if it's coming on quick, some of these will verbal tap. tap. I tell these people this, like if you tap me and rolling, I will verbal tap every time as long as my mouth is available to do so. Sometimes it's covered up, right? But if you, if you tag me, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna tap. Tap, tap. People be to be like like a loud room music playing, like another class going on, and and this person's tearing their shoulder off, and they're like, "I'm tapping fast, bro. Don't you hear me snapping my fingers?" Like people do. do and I, I'm not opposed to this. Like I'm, we're sitting here and I'm teaching, but like when you get to everybody's drilling, there's stuff going on, noise in the room, it can come. Some stuff come on quick, so be careful. Okay. But look, one more time. You're in here, hook under like a heel hook on the elbow, raise forward, and I'm kind of pulling it back to me like that. Make sense? Okay. One, two. I'm show a couple this like, because you can use it, the actual hold as a chest compression, then there's a variation where you tap them with the pin, okay? And then there's uh, this the standard arm triangle choke, okay? So I'll mention those. I think I think you should see them. Just still, you, you might not like joint locks, like I once trained a guy and he's, if you watch a lot of our YouTube videos, he's almost always my uke. Um, and this like, as soon as he started training, he really excelled at arm triangles. It didn't matter if it's a rear naked choke, a dars. Uh, this one here is called Katagatami in Japanese, right? And a lot of people call it that in, uh, in Jiu Jitsu too. You can clock out to finish. You can arm triangle and sit through to finish, right? I always like pawing under the shoulder to finish, okay? But strangles are good. And what I'll do is a lot of times when I throw, hey, remember that one we did and the arm was here and you land like here? This can be a chest compression, 
that he will tap to. This will be a chest compression that he will tap to. And then I start softening you, right? That arm comes out, I'm running through the joint locks. At the end of that cycle, I can push it into a strangle. So we saw, you know, here, here, hey, another uh, sort of joint lock is switching the thigh and breaking over the straight arm. Okay, now look here, Americana. Okay, now this Americana, I some people ignore, and this is is taught. I, this is not. I don't get into. I never let the head go like that from here. You can finish it here by just doing that. This motorcycle grips, and I'm doing this too. Okay, so here, boom. And like you're not finding that, that's when you can start going into the, the chest compression, the strangles, okay? But here, you throw, you switch over, you got that thigh, all right? So I switch my legs. You can switch your legs to just gather and pin. Just hook on right there, okay? Like what you're trying to switch back under here, and then I'm, I'm here. So you can go there, that's the American just here, or you can hook also here. Look here. Everybody teaches this one funny too. People talk about pulling the head. I talk about this anymore. Like I think about like, I'm like, how, how long was I primed before you tapped? John Oneher calls that slack. I think there's a great way to describe it. So people talk about like doing this and he tapped. Did you see all that slack? I don't like that. I like when I was like doing that saying and he tapped immediately. That's that's no slack. Uh, that's like kind of one of the theses trying to get a, a, across the main point today. But it's 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 pulling his head up in a sense, but it's really more pulling it away, right? I, I want his head to stay here or go over a little bit while I pull his arm away. Okay, so I like that. No slack. All right. Give him a little massage before we move on. <laughs> I know that it, everybody, like Americanas can get your shoulder, your labrum particularly, but your, your uh, elbow, your owner, it's rough, okay? So you're here, switch your thigh here and break that arm lock over, okay? Switch that through, motorcycle grips, that, that is this. Okay, nothing wrong with grabbing your thumbs. You like doing that, cool. But like, I don't have that when I grab my thumbs. I don't have that, like sometimes people I'll say, they'll teach like grabbing one thumb or, I just always did no thumbs in motorcycle grip, okay? Now, I can also stuff that there, here. All right, and that's the Americana with the leg versus the Americana with the hands. And we saw a straight arm lock with the, like here with the, uh, the um, interplay with the Kimura if it rotates over. Right? Okay, so you got one with the legs. So I'll come over with the hands. Here, arm bar, hand and leg. I'm breaking it over my leg with my hand. Right? From there, you can fold it down. Americana with the hands. Americana with the legs.